Pope St. John Paul II, perhaps the most well-known pontiff in recent history, remembered for his charismatic nature, was head of the Catholic Church and sovereign of the Vatican City State from 1978 until his death in 2005. His feast day is celebrated on October 22. Karol Joseph Wojtyła was born in the Polish town of Wodowice. He was the youngest of three children born to Karol Wojtyła and Emilia Kozorowska of Lithuanian heritage. Her mother died from a heart attack and kidney failure in 1929 when he was just eight years old. His elder sister Olga died before his birth. His elder brother Edmund was 13 years his senior. Edmund's work as a physician eventually led to his death from scarlet fever, a loss that affected Wojtyła deeply. Carol was baptized a month after his birth, made his first communion at the age of nine, and was confirmed at the age of 18. In mid-1938, they moved to Krakow, where Carol enrolled at the Jagiellonian University. While studying, he worked as a volunteer librarian. He also performed with various theatrical groups and worked as a playwright. During this time, he learned as many as 15 languages which he used extensively when he became Pope. In 1939, after Germany invaded Poland, the Nazi occupation forces closed the university. In February 1940, he met Jan Tyranowski who introduced him to the Carmelite spirituality and the Living Rosary youth groups. After his father's death in 1941, he started thinking seriously about the priesthood. In October 1942, while World War II continued, he went to the bishop's palace in Krakow and asked to study for the priesthood. Soon after, he began courses in the clandestine underground seminary. On August 6, 1944, a day that will be known as Black Sunday, the Gestapo rounded up young men in Krakow to curtail the uprising. Carol escaped to the Archbishop's residence. That day, more than 8,000 men and boys were taken. On January 17, 1945, the Germans fled the city, and the students reclaimed the ruined seminary. After finishing his studies at the seminary, Carol was ordained as a priest on November 1, 1946, by the Archbishop of Krakow, Cardinal Adam Stefan Sapieha. A few weeks later, the Cardinal sent Father Carroll to Rome's Pontifical International Athenaeum Angelicum to study. During his stay at the Angelicum, Father Carroll visited Padre Pio, heard his confession, and later told him that one day he would ascend to the highest post in the church. He earned a license in July 1947, passed his doctoral exam on June 14, 1948, and successfully defended his doctoral thesis titled The Doctrine of Faith in St. John of the Cross in Philosophy on June 19, 1948. The Angelicum preserves the original copy of Father Carroll's typewritten thesis. In 1948, Father Carroll returned to Poland for his first pastoral assignment at the Church of the Assumption in the village of Niegoic. Upon arriving at Niegoic, his first action was to kneel and kiss the ground. He repeated this gesture throughout his papacy. In March 1949, Father was transferred to the parish of St. Florian in Krakow and taught ethics at the Jagiellonian University and the Catholic University of Lublin. While teaching, he gathered a group of about 20 young people, who began to call themselves Rodzinka, the little family. They met for prayer, philosophical discussion, and to help the blind and the sick. In 1953, his habilitation thesis was accepted by the Faculty of Theology at the Jagiellonian University. In 1954, he earned a doctorate in sacred theology, however, he did not receive the degree until 1957. On July 4, 1958, Pope Pius XII appointed him as an auxiliary bishop of Krakow. He was consequently summoned to Warsaw to meet the primate of Poland who informed him of his appointment. He accepted the appointment as auxiliary bishop and he received episcopal consecration as titular bishop of Ombi on September 28, 1958. At the age of 38, Karol became the youngest bishop in Poland. On July 16, 1962, he was appointed as vicar capitular, temporary administrator, 
of the archdiocese until an archbishop could be appointed following the death of Krakow's archbishop Eugenius Baziak. In October 1962, Wojtyła took part in the Second Vatican Council where he made contributions to two of its most historic and influential products, the Decree on Religious Freedom and the Pastoral Constitution on the Church in the Modern World. He also participated in the assemblies of the Synod of Bishops. On January 13, 1964, Pope Paul VI appointed him Archbishop of Krakow. On June 26, 1967, Paul VI announced Wojtyła's promotion to the College of Cardinals. Wojtyła was named Cardinal Priest of the Titulus of San Cesario in Palatio. During 1974-1975, Wojtyła served Pope Paul VI as a consultant to the Pontifical Council for the Laity, as Recording Secretary for the 1974 Synod on Evangelism, and participated extensively in the original drafting of the 1975 Apostolic Exhortation, Evangelii Nuntiandi. Following the death of Pope Paul VI in August of 1978, Cardinal Wojtyła participated and voted in the papal conclave which elected John Paul I. Unfortunately, John Paul I died after only 33 days as Pope, triggering another conclave. The second conclave of 1978 started on October 14, 10 days after the Pope's funeral. It was split between two strong candidates for the papacy, Cardinal Giuseppe Siri and Cardinal Giovanni Benelli. Wojtyła came in as a compromise candidate to his fellow electors. In a surprising turn of events, Wojtyła won on the eighth ballot on the third day. He accepted his election with the words, with obedience in faith to Christ, my Lord, and with trust in the Mother of Christ and the Church, in spite of great difficulties, I accept. In tribute to his immediate predecessor, then took the regnal name of John Paul II. When the new pontiff appeared on the balcony, he broke tradition by addressing the gathered crowd. Wojtyła became the 264th Pope according to the chronological list of popes, the first non-Italian in 455 years. He was only 58. John Paul II is considered the most traveled pope in history, having made journeys to 129 countries. John Paul II's earliest official visits were to the Dominican Republic and Mexico in January 1979. He was also the first pope to visit the White House in October 1979, where he was greeted warmly by President Jimmy Carter. In June 1979, John Paul II made his first papal trip to Poland uplifted the nation's spirit and sparked the formation of the Solidarity Movement in 1980, later brought freedom and human rights to his troubled homeland. He was the first reigning pope to travel to the United Kingdom, in 1982, where he met Queen Elizabeth II, the Supreme Governor of the Church of England. While in Britain, he also visited Canterbury Cathedral and knelt in prayer with Robert Runcie, the Archbishop of Canterbury, at the spot where Thomas Becket had been killed, and held several large-scale open-air masses, including one at Wembley Stadium, attended by some 80,000 people. On January 15, 1995, during World Youth Day, he offered Mass to an estimated crowd of between 5 and 7 million in Luneta Park, Manila, Philippines, considered to be the largest single gathering in Christian history. In March 2000, while visiting Jerusalem, John Paul became the first pope in history to visit and pray at the Western Wall. That same year, he became the first modern pope to visit Egypt, where he met with the Coptic Pope, Pope Shenouda III, and the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria. He was the first Catholic pope to visit and pray in an Islamic mosque, in Damascus, Syria, in 2001. He visited the Umayyad Mosque, a former Christian church where John the Baptist is believed to be interred, where he made a speech calling for Muslims, Christians, and Jews to live together. Later that year, amid post-September 11th concerns, he traveled to Kazakhstan, with an audience largely consisting of Muslims, and to Armenia, to participate in the celebration of 1,700 years of Armenian Christianity. As he entered St. Peter's Square to address an audience on May 13, 1981, 
John Paul II was shot and critically wounded by an expert Turkish gunman named Mehmet Ali Arja. Before being operated on, he asked the doctors not to remove his brown scapula. He underwent five hours of surgery to treat his wounds. The Pope later stated that the Blessed Virgin Mary helped keep him alive throughout his ordeal. Arja was caught and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Two days after Christmas in 1983, John Paul II visited Arja in prison. John Paul II and Arja spoke privately for about 20 minutes. He said, what we talked about will have to remain a secret between him and me. I spoke to him as a brother, whom I have pardoned and who has my complete trust. A second assassination attempt happened on May 12, 1982, in Forma, Portugal, almost a year after the first attempt on his life. The assailant was a traditionalist Catholic Spanish priest named Juan Maria Fernando y Crone, who tried to stab John Paul II with a bayonet. Subsequently, he left the priesthood, served three years of a six-year sentence, and was later treated for mental illness. In 1995, the Al-Qaeda-funded Bojinka plotted to kill John Paul II during a visit to the Philippines for the World Youth Day celebrations. The assassination was supposed to divert attention from the next phase of the operation. However, the plotters were arrested a week before the Pope's visit. Even before becoming Pope, he had been a prominent editor and supporter of initiatives such as the Letter of Reconciliation of the Polish Bishops to the German Bishops from 1965. As Pope, he officially made public apologies for over 100 wrongdoings, including the legal process of the Italian scientist and philosopher Galileo Galilei, himself a devout Catholic. Catholics' involvement with the African chiefs who sold their subjects and captives in the African slave trade. The church hierarchy's role in burnings at the stake and the religious wars that followed the Protestant Reformation. The injustices committed against women, the violation of women's rights, and the historical denigration of women. The inactivity and silence of many Catholics during the Holocaust, and the Great Jubilee of the year 2000 included a day of prayer for forgiveness of the sins of the church on the 12th of March 2000. On November 20, 2001, Pope John Paul II sent his first email apologizing for the Catholic sex abuse cases, the church-backed stolen generations of Aboriginal children in Australia, and to China for the behavior of Catholic missionaries during the colonial times. Pope John Paul II was hospitalized with breathing problems caused by a bout of influenza on February 1, 2005. He was discharged 10 days later but was subsequently hospitalized again for the same complications two weeks later where he underwent a tracheotomy. On March 31, 2005, following a urinary tract infection, he developed septic shock. Later that day, Vatican sources announced that John Paul II had been given the anointing of the sick. On April 2, 2005, Pope John Paul II died of heart failure from profound hypotension and complete circulatory collapse from septic shock. His final words in English are, Allow me to depart to the house of the Father. Inspired by calls to make him a saint from the crowds gathered during the funeral mass, his successor Pope Benedict XVI began the beatification process, bypassing the normal restriction that five years must pass after a person's death before beginning the beatification process. Camillo Ruini, vicar general of the Diocese of Rome, cited exceptional circumstances which suggested that the waiting period could be waived. This decision was announced on May 13, 2005, on the feast of Our Lady of Forma and the 24th anniversary of the assassination attempt on John Paul II at St. Peter's Square. On November 16, 2009, a panel of reviewers at the Congregation for the Causes of Saints voted unanimously that John Paul II had lived a life of heroic virtue. A month later, Pope Benedict XVI signed the first of two decrees needed for beatification and proclaimed John Paul II, Venerable. John Paul II was beatified on May 1, 2011, and on April 27, 2014, a Divine Mercy Sunday, he was canonized by Pope Francis during a ceremony in St. Peter's Square, together with Pope St. John XXIII.
For more information about every saints and their feast day, please like and subscribe to our channel, House of Prayers for Everyone.